the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On New Husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Dynamite was a cat. He wasn't a beautiful cat. That is, he wasn't beautiful to anyone but old Tim Riley. To Tim, who had raised him from a kitten, Dynamite's many battle scars were medals of honor. And Tim used to brag that Dynamite could whip anything in the Yukon not more than four times his weight. However, Tim's wife, Molly, did not share his love for the beast. Dynamite, get off in that pillow. Get off, I say. Tim, come and get this nasty base off the bed. He's brought a mouse in here and is eating it right in the middle of your pillow. <laughs> He always brings things in to show me what he catches. <laughs> well, old fellow, what a fine mouse you got this time. Yeah. Oh, he always growls at me. Take it out. That's the tone of your voice, Molly. Dynamite don't like being yelled at. Sure, and a woman would have to be nothing less than a saint not to yell at him. How you can be so fond of that beast is beyond me. Half an ear gone, scars all over him, half a tail. Oh, he's the now, worst. Now, wait, little... Alan, you still love me, don't you? And I ain't much prettier than dynamite. One ear froze off, two fingers missing. Ah, oh, Tim, stop it. Take him out before he ruins that oh, pillow. Oh, patience, me darling. I'm just getting me coat on. Oh, just flat as your vanity, that's all. The way that cat follows you around like a black shadow. Him and me understand each other. I talk to him by the hour and he never disagrees. Come on, me black beauty. We'll eat your mouse outside. We'll eat your mouse. Tim Riley, you sound as if you're going to share it with him. Sure, and if you weren't such a fine cook, maybe I would. <laughs> ah, never mind. Hang out your mouse. That's the boy. Ah, looks as if it's going to snow. Dynamite and I will go for a bit of a hike and then I'll bring in some wood. All right now. Ah, Molly's a fine woman, Dynamite. Yeah. But females are funny about pillars and things. Here we are. Ah, we'll sit down on this log and you can finish your mouse in peace. Yeah. And now I'll have a drag of my pipe. Ah. Mm. Well, this winter will be over. I'd be glad to get out of this ice and snow. Barking! Fire, yeah. Husky! Come here, King. Uh, here, you two Spartans. Stop, stop that, King. Run, Dynamite. King, come back here. Back, I say. <laughs> Never mind, Sergeant. <laughs> Dynamite safe in the roof of the cabin. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. I guess those two never will be friendly. <laughs> it's a long-standing feud, Preston. But you know, I think they're both kind of a giant. Dynamite stands his ground with lots of dogs, but when he sees King, he hightails it out of reach. Come here, King. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Chasing that cat again. <laughs> he says, no, he's not. What's more, he'll do it again. <laughs> you know, King's never forgiven Dynamite for that pot on the nose he got when he was a pup. Even then, I think Dynamite suspected he'd met his match. <laughs> well, Sergeant, I haven't seen you for a long time. What brings you to these parts? A shipment of valuable furs have been stolen. The Hudson Bay Company was sending them down to Whitehorse. Furs, you say? You think someone around here did it? We've traced them to this territory, but lost their trail. I think they're lying low around here somewhere, and probably waiting for the spring breakup so they can get them out by boat. Well, I'll certainly keep my eyes open for you. Trouble is, Tim, there's so many places to hide around here. These mountains have a million caves, and the woods are close by. There's a nice reward if they're found. <laughs> and I could use it. <laughs> uh, why don't you come in for a cup of hot tea? Uh, be glad. Thanks, Tim, but we'd better make it another time. I have a lot to do in town. Come on, King. <laughs> Say hello to Molly and tell her I'll see her in a day or so. All right, Sergeant. Goodbye. Right, on King! On you, Husky! And now, you black piece of Satan, come down from that roof and go for a walk with me. Tim strolled along at the foot of a huge cliff that flanked the slope of a mountain. Suddenly, a small rabbit darted from behind a rock. Dynamite was after it like a flash, and both animals disappeared in a crack in the cliff. Dynamite, come back here! Dynamite, 
You inky demon, where'd you go? Making me squeeze through this narrow place. Well, I'll be a cave. Who'd have thought it? Oh, there you are. So your quarry got away, did it? It served you. What's this? A stack of furs. Glory be to heaven, hundreds of furs. And wood for a fire. Yeah. Tell you, mate, you've led me to the fur sergeant Preston is looking for. Well, come on, let's get out of here before someone comes. Scat now, out you go. Hurry up, eh? You're the floor. Tell you, mate, come back. Someone's coming. Oh, there he goes. Steve, look, a black cat coming out of the crack in the cliff. Yeah. Well, can you beat? Get back, eh? See, there's footprints going in there, and there ain't none coming out. Yeah, you're right. One man's footprint. Well, we've caught the thieving skunk, whoever he is. All right, there we are in there. Come out with your hands up. Heaven preserve me if I only had a gun. You cut through the crack in that cliff, and I'd blast you full of lead. We can't get in there. Tell us why we're squeezing through. Yeah, but what do we do? Come on, you cowards, I'm waiting. I'm itching a pepper you. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord, to be telling a lie, but in a spot like this, maybe you'll make it work. If we could just get in there. Well, we can't. We can't just sit here until he starts to death. Come on, Ace, we're going to start shooting through that opening. Oh, it's too narrow. We can't hit him. I'm trying it anyway. Fire away, you buzzards. But show your faces in here and I'm blasting the king's coat. Come on, there, you hyena. One of these slugs is bound to get the trigger later. Try sticking your head through that crack and see what happens. You're wasting your bullets. Come out, I say. See, look out! That rocket stone's coming down on us! Tons of rock and ice buried the two men who had started the avalanche with their gunfire. At last, the silence of the Northland settled over everything. Then the stillness was broken by the cries of a lonely black cat that climbed over the huge pile of rock and snow that covered the entrance to the cave where he had last seen his master. The falling snow sprinkled his black coat with silver. Sergeant Preston sat in his cabin in town with King at his feet. He yawned as he put down the book he was reading. Well, boy, almost ten o'clock. Guess it's time we hit the hay. Well, who's calling at this hour? Now, boy, be still. Sergeant Preston, it's Molly. Come in. Something the matter? Oh, Sergeant, I hope you won't think I'm a silly old woman, but Tim went out and didn't come home. Sit down and warm yourself, Molly. Did you walk all the way into town alone? Yes, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got so worried. It ain't like him to do this. What time did he leave? Before supper. At first I got mad. I thought maybe he'd come into town and had a bit of a nip with his pals. But then I got scared. No one in town has seen him at all. Oh. They told me. You were here, and I thought maybe you'd seen him. Why, I haven't seen him since late this afternoon. Did you notice which way he went when he left? I was getting up. Uh, he went for a walk, but I don't know which way, and I have a feeling something has happened. Well, calm down, Molly. We'll be able to follow his tracks. Yeah, that's the trouble. I thought of that, but the snow has got everything. Oh, that's right. It has been snowing hard. You better stay in town tonight, Molly, and we'll start the search for Tim first thing in the morning. In spite of the cold, perspiration ran down the legs and arms of Tim Riley as he threw down the shovel he had found in the cave. Well, it's no use. You're a goner, Tim Riley. I might as well start praying. What a place to die. At least they won't have to bury me. That's been done. Sure, that can't be... Dynamite! It's you! Now, where in heaven did you come from? I saw you run out. Now, how in heaven's name did you get in again? Oh, me beautiful darling. If you know how glad I am to see you. Now, if I light another one of these sticks, maybe I can find out how you got in. I knew the air was coming in from somewhere. Now, let's see. You came from the back, it seems. Oh, yes, here it is. A crack in the wall. 
Uh, but only twice as wide as you. Mm. No, but it's no use. I can't even get my head in it, let alone the stomach of mine. Mm. Well, at least I have you for company till I die. And we have a nice soft bed of expensive furs to sleep on, you and me. <laughs> Never did you think, Jim Riley, that you'd die on a bed worth ten or fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Well, come on, dynamite, it's time we're sleeping. Dynamite! Dynamite, where are you? Oh, it must be morning by now. Here, Kitty! You've gone, deserted me. Or maybe you've gone back to Molly and she followed you to me. Ah, there you are. And what's that you're bringing? A rabbit! You brought me breakfast. So you can get out of the place. All right, give me the rabbit. Now, Dynamite, we've come to the place where it's not just admiring your catches that I'll be doing. Now I'm making them with you. Oh, but Sergeant Preston, there's been no trace of Tim for three days. You comb the territory for him. Oh, something terrible has happened to him. We're not giving up yet, Molly. Keep your courage up. If he were dead, dynamite would come home. Uh, not that animal. He's probably sitting on Tim's grave somewhere, refusing to move. Or oh, maybe they both was killed. Try, Tim trying to rescue him from a, a wolf or something. Well, now, stop letting your imagination run away with you, Molly. Oh, dear. I'm going out with Indian Pete this morning. It's one of the best trackers in the territory and knows every inch of it. We'll find Tim. Sergeant Preston and Indian Pete tramped through the snow near the mountain. King, running ahead, suddenly growled, then darted behind a rock, barking frantically. What's wrong with King? He seems to have... Look. Okay, something. It's a cat. It's dynamite. King, stop! <laughs> Look. They go upside a mountain. Come on, Pete, hurry. I hope King hasn't caught him. The dog got him cornered somewhere. Look, cat tracks up here. Yes, all over this one little section. King, where's dynamite, fellow? See, cat go down here, crack in rock. Yes, too small for King to follow. Quiet, King. I wonder if Tim has just a chance. Tim, Tim. Him there, under earth. There must be a cave under here somewhere. We'll get you out, Tim. I'm going into town for help. Hang on, old man. Tim rested comfortably in his cabin, talking to Sergeant Preston as Molly bustled happily about. It was that gunfire that started the avalanche and killed both of them. It was almost the end of me, too. That you got the reward for the furs, Tim. You deserve it after that experience. Well, it was you who got me in the furs out, Sergeant. I think you I'll are. take no credit for it. If it hadn't been for that long-standing feud between Dynamite and King, we'd never have found you. Oh, heaven bless that cat. And now, Tim, darling, let me light your pipe for you. Molly, you mean you're actually asking me to smoke it? Oh, I'll always be grateful for them matches you carry to light it. You'd had to sit there in the dark eating raw rabbit. Oh, I can't bear the thought of it. Oh, Saints Preserve us, what's that? <laughs> Don't worry, Molly. Dynamite and King are just enjoying their old feud again. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.